Welcome to making a Stuart model steam plant part 63. Removing the parts from the baseboard, cutting some mahogany for the sides and carefully fitting them in place using cyanoacrylate adhesive. The pieces of mahogany that I originally cut and was going to use for the sides I decided against. And here's what arrived in the post. These pieces are 18 inches long, even though the advert said they were 44 centimetres long, they're actually 18 inches. Once upon a time you could walk into any model shop and buy mahogany in good lengths like 3 feet, 1 yard or 36 inches. These pieces have obviously been cut from a 36 inch length. But the problem is I bought these from eBay. When I think about it, a 3 foot long piece of mahogany sheet is fairly difficult to post and that is why I think they chop them in half and sell them as 44 centimetre lengths or in this case, as I've just mentioned, 18 inches. When I ordered this mahogany, I got confused. I thought that the longest side of the baseboard was 44 centimetres, but no, it's not. So these pieces of mahogany sheet will be no good for the front and rear of the plant. The solution to this was quite simple. I just had to dig deep into my supply of mahogany, and guess what? I found a piece that was 3 feet in length, and I can cut everything that I need from this piece of mahogany. Before starting work on the baseboard, I need to remove the boiler and the mounting plinth for the double 10 V. This was quite simple. I loosened the Allen cap head bolts with an Allen key and then just wound them out of the wood. Here I'm moving the boiler out of the way, leaving the temporary heat insulation behind. Why is it temporary? Well, it's made up of three pieces. The final ceramic material heat shield will be cut from one piece. This clip shows me using an allen key to unbolt the clamp from the other side. As you can see these bolts like all the others are threaded into the wood and they really are a tight fit. And threading wood to take a bolt is perfectly acceptable There's more than enough strength with the thread in the wood. I'm not going to show the cutting process, I did this in a previous video. I think it's about time I mention this special fitting. This is the drain pipe from the sump that sits in the baseboard. I need to drill a hole in one of the mahogany side pieces to accurately line up with this fitting. The pipe screws into the silver soldered sump and what I'm doing here is unscrewing it. No sooner was that done, I coated this end of the thread with Loctite 603 and bolted the whole assembly back in position. But this time, when I tightened it up using the steam fitting on the end, I tightened it up sufficiently to pull the fitting all the way into the wood. Even though it doesn't look like it onto the camera angle, now the brass tube is below the level of the wood. I drilled a hole in one of the mahogany side pieces so it lined up with the tube. And here using my bench mounted Proxon drill with a drum sander fitted, I'm cleaning up the hole. It's more or less in the right place, but the drilled hole was a bit messy, so I'm just cleaning everything up. What I was really doing was making sure that this hole perfectly matched the position of the brass fitting. And as you can see here, it does. Now it's time to get the super glue out. This is cyanoacrylate adhesive or CA glue and this is the medium viscosity type. What you've just seen me do is thoroughly coat the piece of mahogany. I've carefully pressed it into position on the edge of the baseboard to make sure I have full contact between the cyanoacrylate adhesive and the edge of the wood, I'm using masking tape to pull it tightly into position. You can't hang around when you're doing this job because the super glue really does set quickly. The video by the way is running at twice normal speed and after the first pieces of masking tape were in place, I filled in the gaps with some more. After a quick adjustment using the drum sander, it's perfect. One down and three to go. I don't have to mess about with this next piece because there isn't any hole in the wood to fit to. It's just a case of thoroughly coating the piece of mahogany using the cyanoacrylate adhesive, not leaving any gaps at all. After fitting the second piece of the mahogany edging in place, once again I use the masking tape method to hold the wood in place until the cyano adhesive is fully cured. I'll leave it for about 24 hours, that should be okay. I decided to speed up the process just in case any viewers slipped into a coma, so I left out fitting one of the sides. I did fit it, but I didn't bother showing it. 
And here, one more time, I'm using copious amounts of cyanoacrylate adhesive to make sure that this piece of mahogany becomes permanently connected to the side of the baseboard. Even though the planking on top of the baseboard is quite thick, I didn't want the same effect on the sides, and when I look at the way it's going, I think it should look okay with this mahogany. The more eagle-eyed viewers will notice there's a slight gap between the edge and the top of the planking on the right-hand side. I'll show you what to do about this in the next episode. You have to remember that this mahogany is a natural product, and not all of it is perfectly cut. But everything will be fine when I finish the job. Here is a special shot, and I call this one cyanoacrylate adhesive, also known as superglue, also known as CA glue, drying on the baseboard. And that's it for this episode. Stay safe, stay healthy. Thanks for watching, and I hope you found it useful. Please take the time to visit my Mainsteam Models website and click on the section of the website that says Video Playlists. And by doing that, you can find other videos that you may like to watch. And by using the playlists, you can actually watch the videos back to back.